afternoon, depending on where you recording in progress. Um, hello and welcome. We appreciate you being here today. Um, this is our webinar today, uh, co-sponsored by the FSL uh, KC or the FSKC and the CLDE uh, KC, a conversation on political engagement. My name is Christopher Miofsky, and I serve as one of the co-chair elects for the CLDE uh, knowledge community. Um, so what we want to do first and foremost is, um, oh, um, by the way, I'm at the University of Denver, where I serve as the Associate Director of Attorneys for Elect. It's probably something I should have uh, made sure that we all put out there. So if you feel comfortable doing so, um, you can go ahead and come off mute and give your name, your, uh, your institution, um, or headquarters if you work for headquarters, and you know what, what brought you here today. So if anybody wants to start, jump right in. Or I'll pick on someone. I can go. Great. Um, hey, y'all. My name is Arielle. I'm the Florida State Coordinator with the Campus Vote Project. I'm based in St. Pete, Florida, um, but I work with a number of different campuses who have a lot of different populations. So I was looking for great tips on how to engage folks. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, my name is Brian. I am an academic advisor at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, uh, and I help advise uh, my own fraternity undergraduate chapter as an alumni advisor. I also am teaching a uh, freshman success class in the fall and hoping to uh, use some of these concepts in that class. Awesome. Uh, feel free to also put it in the chat if you feel more comfortable in doing so. Um, and we can uh, we can go ahead and get started. Anybody else want to jump in and say hello? Hi, my name is Gina Lee Olakoya. I serve as Director of Student Engagement at University of Illinois, um, and I uh, coordinate our campus coalition around student voter initiatives and civic life. Awesome. Thanks, Gina. Anybody else? Cool. Well, then we are going to go ahead and get started, and I will turn it over to our wonderful presenter today, Nutesh. Hi, everyone. Um, it's so nice to be here. My name is Nutesh, and um, I'm the Deputy Florida State Coordinator for Campus Vote Project. Um, I'm really happy to partner with CDLE and just to present this training on how to organize on college campuses. So to talk a little bit about um, you know, my background and experience and what brought me here. Um, so I started organizing on my high school campus. I was a part of um, my best friend started this club called PACE. It stood for political awareness and civic engagement. And um, we just were organizing around the 2016 elections. I was 17 years old at the time. Um, so that was really like my first experience um, in grassroots work. And then I organized all throughout college. And um, my first job out of college last year was with the Florida Democratic Party. Um, and I kind of wanted to focus more on college campuses and just like helping students because I know that when I was in that position as a student I wanted that kind of help and so I found um, Campus Vote Project which was literally what I was looking for um, and the type of work that I really wanted to like focus on and um, so I started about two months ago and um, yeah I've been you know doing college centered or focused work ever since um, and so that's kind of what brought me here um, as far as the agenda, we're going to talk about um, Campus Vote Project as a whole, um, our mission as an organization, and then we're going to go into the four buckets of voter engagement, steps to organizing on your college campus, um, which uh, sub points are understanding your campus, planning effectively um, for events and recruitment, as well as um, just going through some additional information and resources. And so to start with Campus Vote Project, so we are a project of the Fair Election Center, um, which is a national nonpartisan voting rights and election reform organization. And so we use litigation and advocacy to remove barriers to student registration and voting. And so particularly, we try to focus on disenfranchised and underrepresented groups um, and overall trying to improve election administration. 
So we got started in 2012. Um, so actually this past February, um, this February, 2022, we celebrated our 10 year anniversary. And um, we started to specifically work with college campuses and universities to address barriers to student voting and engagement. And so our goal is to work towards 100% student voter participation and advocacy through institutionalizing reforms on campuses that help students uh, register to vote and turn out to vote. And now to talk a little bit about our four buckets of voter engagement. Um, the first is voter registration, voter education, voter turnout, and then students as voter advocates. So we fit our work into these four buckets. Voter registration is literally just what it sounds like. Um, how do we get people registered to vote? How do, how do we get students registered to vote? And that process looks a little different depending on the state. Um, I know certain orgs use different strategies and mechanisms. Um, voter education, though, is how do we make voting less intimidating um, and less complicated for students? Um, how do we make sure everyone knows things such as like their polling place location, um, the dates and deadlines, when to get an absentee ballot, when to register to vote for primary elections versus generals, um, and just who's overall like the candidates who are running who are on the ballot. Voter turnout is how we make voting fun, engaging and impactful, how we get people to the polls and how we really drive voter turnout. Um, and then students as voter advocates. So we are all advocating in some way, shape or form to make voting accessible um, and so that they know that they have a right to vote. And so when we look at any social movement, um, we can see that there are students at the forefront. Um, and so we say, how do we support those students and their communities to lead these types of issues? Um, and so how we, and how this kind of all ties into Greek life specifically. Um, the per, so I thought of it as kind of what is Greek life? And I thought that it'd be good to kind of like give that context and talk about um, the purpose. So Greek life is, there's a huge emphasis on volunteerism teamwork um, and just overall community service and leadership, which are all connected to things that are helping just people who are less fortunate and something that directly ties into voting rights and voting voter education. Um, so things that are within Greek life that we think would be great to use that as a platform to um, encourage and engage more students to vote and to turn out to vote and to get other students engaged. Um, things such as Greek life having a large membership. So there are actually over 750,000 current members in a fraternity or sorority and over 9 million alumni across the United States. And they're especially popular in the South with more than 50% of campus um, organizations um, and students being involved in some form of you know, Greek activity or chapter. Um, Greek life, uh, sororities and frats are super well connected. They have a huge network. Um, since Greek life has a huge focus on leadership and public service, many members are often um, interwoven within their student government association or other huge clubs like that and hold leadership positions where they have that decision-making ability. Um, Greek life is holds a lot of resources. So not only do they have a lot of people and a strong network, but they also have the funds and you know just the money to support these types of initiatives. Um, also many members know within Greek life, know how to fundraise, how to publicly speak, how to table events, because these are kind of like the core tenants of what they do anyways. And so kind of connecting that to voting advocacy is just would, would be the icing on the cake. Um, to, to public service and leadership. So many of the skills that um, they already have just directly goes into voter engagement activities and would benefit that. Greek Life also hosts big events. So not only do they hold big events, but they know how to conduct and organize and, and you know turn out people to come to these big events. So overall, there would just be a lot of benefits to having more frats and sororities be involved and get their members involved in voter advocacy. Um, and we like to start with, in that, getting to know your campus and community before anything else. 
So in order to make the biggest impact, you need to have as much information as possible. So the first step is asking a lot of questions and not just that, but asking those questions to the people that more likely than not have those answers. Um, so you want to know who are those people and what are these people talking about? So it's important to ask questions to the right people, making sure that um, your campus has like student leadership and civic engagement offices or even like student affairs um, or a multicultural center that can directly aid with your organizing. Um, and so student organizations and frat and sorority chapters specifically, the questions that we think that are the most effective to ask or most, most strategic is questions like what chapters have the most members, who are the most popular, who are the most effective in their organizing strategies, and who is the most funding. Um, is Greek life big on your campus? I know some campuses have like less than 5% engagement, um, but if you're one of the ones, if you're one of the states that are in the South, what, what percentage of students on your campus are involved in Greek life? Um, which of these have already organized civic engagement activities on your campus and which of those orgs are actually willing to partner? Um, asking questions like that can just, you know, effectively move the the goals and our priorities a lot more um, quickly. Um, what does student government do on your campus? So what issues have they taken stances on? Um, what are they known for on campus? Kind of their goals and priorities. What are the biggest issues on campus in general? Like what are, what are students actively talking about? Um, whether it's directly related to their campus community and their administration or just issues around that community off campus? What are the biggest issues that people are talking about in general? Um, and then specific to voter engagement, who organizes voter registration activities on campus? Is it student led or administrator led or both? Are these activities held during major election cycles or year round? Does your campus participate in civic holidays like National Voter Registration Day, Voter Education Week and or Vote Early Day, which are all in October? And then what does civic engagement look like on your campus? So asking questions like, do all students participate in some type of service learning component? And what is the state of, of just overall general volunteerism on your campus? And so understanding your campus and community. So ways to leverage information to get to know the civic engagement status of your institution is by seeking out questions such as, is your campus a part of the voter-friendly campus designation program, the all-in challenge, and are they coordinated somewhat with NSOLV? Like where are they getting their um, statistical and quantitative information about demographics, voter rates, and just general engagement on their campus. Um, so you can pretty much seek these answers from your campus admin, um, again, from people in offices like student affairs or student leadership and civic engagement office, um, or even a political science professor may either be the coordinator of that or know a person who is within their political science department, um, including the dean. Um, so it's always beneficial to start there and then expand outward. A way to get to know the voting status of your institution's um, student population could be through conducting surveys as well on voting, um, coordinating with professors uh, for students to complete in-class questionnaires in exchange for extra credit, for example, that could be like an initiative, holding informational forums or just like discussion blocks walking up to people um, during like lunch hours or in like your student union building and directly asking them those questions like, are you registered to vote? Why or why not? And getting just a greater understanding um, of the issues that these people hold behind their barriers to vote and their reasons why they do or don't want to vote. And what is going to make the biggest impact? So first we have, to, so now that we've gotten to know our campuses um, or how we can find out more about our campuses, um, maybe your campus is a part of the voter-friendly campus des designation program. Um, you're figuring out what actions you wanna take, what's, what strategies you wanna create in order to get that information, um, event tactics, that will make the biggest impact and actually reach 
um, the most students on campus. Um, and you can ask things such as, or you can um, coordinate big events such as National Voter Registration Day, um, Voter Education Week, Vote Early Day. Um, this includes faculty organizing um, and how you can kind of like get these events to be successful. Um, student or student government, getting your student government involved, um, different events like um, creating initiatives to register people to vote and pledge to vote. That's a big one. Um, some frats require registering to vote or pledging to vote um, either during club rush or like at or at some sort of orientation at the beginning of the semester. Um, we're first year and transfer orient, we're first year and transfer students um, are more likely to, to do that or the um, outreach for them will probably be higher um, as well as like student leaders and having like organization trainings, um, hosting election days as a school holiday or having some sort of service learning component in first year courses or seminars. Um, I know the discussion forums, rallies, and marches are pretty effective in getting just people amped up and motivated. Um, and then getting the entire sorority and fraternity to pledge to vote. Um, so you can do like creative events like movie nights or game nights and just art related activities. And a big one that's actually not talked about enough is getting like the athleticism groups or teams involved like if there's a huge football team or a huge basketball team that's a part of your um, school getting them involved um, would probably turn out that um, voting population even more and now for some um, you know just information from the all in uh, or all in to vote um, pledging to vote is simple and effective so the research shows that somebody pledging to vote, um, they're, if they pledge to vote, they're more likely to actually turn out to vote because you're getting them engaged and you're getting them motivated and excited. There are free resources that the All In Challenge and the Student Per Vote provides. Um, and so it says, you know, by making this pledge, you promise to vote on election day. Um, studies show that you're more likely to complete an action if you've already made a public commitment to do so. That's why we built this pledge as a way for you and your friends and family to maintain accountability when it comes to voting. Not only does voting help your community, but pledging to vote helps your school also. And I think it's also just kind of like an influence thing. Um, if you do it, then somebody else is more likely to do it. Um, I know that some of our schools that we've, some of our campuses that we've worked with they've done um, pledging to vote uh, initiatives and events like do not forget to vote. So they would bring you know, donuts to this event and they would have um, students just that are walking by sign their contact information and then sign the pledge to vote stating that they will pledge to vote this fall, this um, coming election. And as an incentive, they, get, they gave out donuts. Um, so just things like that to get people motivated and, and to get them out. And now to talk about how to go about the planning stages now that we've gotten to know our campus, gathering all that information, having a sense of what this information means and what will make the biggest impact. Now we wanna start with actually planning these events and how to go about it. So I like to say, just start backwards goal setting, which sounds weird, but in theory, it's super effective. So Starting rather than starting with our specific goals for that specific event, we start backwards and work our way from bigger picture to smaller picture. Um, for example, so I get an assignment to create a discussion block for students, which are essentially lessons for our CVP fellows. I'd first want to ask myself what that overall goal is with what I think is most important for them to learn at that discussion block as it relates to our mission at CVP. So that's kind of like our mission at CVP, that's the overall big picture. And then from there, prioritize what's happening near or on that expected discussion block date, and then organize around that and include things that are relative and, and relevant to the, to the events or the holidays or just anything happening around that timeline. Um, and then, from there being able to better gauge what content and material is most appropriate and what 
what would thus be more effective towards what we're trying to specifically um, target and work on on our campuses. Um, so that's kind of just like an example that I like to use. Um, a great way to gauge accessibility and capacity engagement and just overall success um, is being as inclusive as possible and not just to specific people or groups like underrepresented groups, but also like civic holidays that people may not be aware of. Knowing your dates and deadlines um, for, for your school, um, getting a hold of your academic school calendar and any specific election dates and deadlines that are coming up. Um, as uh, so, right, so we talked about civic holidays. So that includes National Voter Registration Week, which is the first week of October, Election Hero Day, um, which is a big one, um, which is right, the, it's the day before election day. Um, and yeah, and just knowing when classes start and stop, knowing when there are holiday breaks could all just make your planning more strategically, um, more strategic. And so making sure you plan your events ahead of time to know exactly what you want to do, when you want to do it. And so you're able to get other people involved in a timely manner because, you know, other people are super busy as well. And so we want to be considerate of their schedules. Um, having some leverage in the amount of access that we can gauge on campus with permission. So I know that um, and not every campus or university is the same, but I know a lot of campuses have, you know, like hard deadlines of when to get certain submissions in, in order for you to even host an event. And that could include like hosting a space, filling out um, a required form to do so and submitting that on time, initiating and confirming guest speakers, whether they're, you know, a professor or from an outside partner organization. Um, and just having any other, you know, aspect that isn't directly related to students, having that be involved, that more likely than not will require some sort of like permission um, to guarantee it. And so being sure to know the requirements and expectations for your school um, in hosting these events. Um, I know that, you know, some schools also have like liability policies. So if you are getting things like a guest speaker, you have to sign, you know, like an acknowledgement agreement say, saying that, you know, they're not liable if something happens. And, you know, there, there's a lot of logistical things that go into it. So just making sure that you are speaking to a representative at your university who knows, you know, all of these administrative things and setting that, get, getting that already out of the way before you actually start your um, event planning. So either way, it's always best to know all these things ahead of time so that you can execute responsibly and successfully. And networking, networking, getting to know the right people, and letting the right people get to know you. So sooner or later, one way or another, you're probably going to need at least one person that you've previously communicated with, um, which is a big part of just like organizing in general, whether it's on college campuses or, or not. Um, getting acquainted with people who are doing the same work as you is, you know, probably ideal. So like going to different clubs, um, that are organizing, you know, these same kind of like civic engagement things and partnering with them um, also increases your credibility too. Because like if you're doing this event for the first time and they've already done it, not only can, you know, you learn from what they've already, like their successes or failures and learn from that, um, but they already have like kind of a membership or people who have come out to that event. Um, if a lot of people came out. And so partnering with them would just make that um, networking and being able to partner with them would just make that turnout for your event more successful. Um, getting acquainted with point people, like point persons um, at your student life and student affairs offices, um, chairs of social science departments, that all goes into the networking aspect. Um, it would be a good idea to get become familiar with people who are in charge of event services. I know that at some universities, that's like a whole separate department. Um, typically for most universities, I believe you would have to go through them if you want to like host a space, um, usually typically for big events, but even like I know classroom spaces, some, some universities require that. So pinpointing at least two reliable people of all the ones that you've connected to, to maintain that close communication and you know, people that you know that you can count on um, when it comes to networking and relationship building. Um, and so 
now that we've talked about planning, we can go into a more specific aspect of planning, which is recruitment. Um, when we think about event planning, we can think of it, I like to think of it through two, con through two prong concept, which are people and things. So people, how many people will be on board for the planning stages and the execution stages of your event or initiative? Um, sometimes you'll have to prepare things such as like materials, toolkits, deciding on what spaces you'll need. Um, if you're doing like something internal, like in, in, in a school classroom, having things such as like a projector, knowing how to use the projector. Um, if you've never been in that space before, just logistical things like that is always good to get out of the way to prevent any like technical um, difficulties. Um, sometimes you will have to even put out money, right? So like knowing how much your event will cost. Um, that you need to be able to pinpoint who you can contact um, for the most part event services but like i said before some universities are different there may be uh, another office or more than one office that handles logistical things like that um and so that's people and things logistics like tools supplies tangible items that you'll either need to set up the event like to organize it or to pass out to people at the event making sure that um you know things such as like expenses and reimbursement forms if i know some universities they have their clubs um pay for it out of pocket and then they just reimburse you later um i think that would be just a good rule of thumb to know how your organization does how your um, university does that. Um, and yeah, so recruiting and retaining faculty, students and partners. Um, in terms of support, you I always say that it's best to have at least one authority figure as an overseer of your organization or event to help facilitate administrative decisions and discussions. Um, and just to be kind of like a point person for logistics for for things that are happening administratively that maybe a student would not be aware of um, or or even if they are aware of it, they may not have the capacity for. So having an internal partner who can kind of be like a person who can make that decision, um, I think is always best. And outreach. So you can get this person directly through this building. Um, which is just going on your university's website and going through the list of faculty and just emailing all of them um, through outreach emails um, ahead of way ahead of time before the event. I would probably say like two to three months ahead of ahead of time, depending on how big the event is. Um, and yeah, so this could be a political science professor, somebody in the political science department, like a dean or somebody on your campus who's already acquainted with civic engagement activities and have had that experience of hosting those types of events on campus, I think would be great people to start with in terms of outreach. And um, sometimes you could even find an article with their email. Um, and so that's kind of another way as opposed to just like reaching them from a university email. Uh, so that's reaching faculty, staff, admin. Reaching students, I think, there are different ways to do this. Um, students are spread out throughout the campus. Some students are not involved in anything club-wise, organization-wise, and some students are involved in everything. And then there are people that you have to meet in the middle. So I think passing out flyers of the events, QR codes stamped on like informational desks um, or help desks so that they can easily just register, like scan the QR code and register. Um, obviously posting on social media, on different social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, the more the merrier. And yeah, in terms of social media specifically, I think sometimes it's not even just enough to post like a story or a post um, on the page, but also like sending comments out. So commenting on other organizations as posts. Um, that's also another strategy for networking and outreach. Um, but student groups commenting on their stories, commenting on their post on their page, um, following the student leaders who are connected to that organization and just anybody who has membership to that organization. That's also like a pretty like strategic way to reach out and, and really get the masses. Um, as well as incentivizing turnout. 
and information spreading. And so I like to say, tell at least five people about the event. And that could also be incentivized. Like if you tell five people, if you pledge to tell five people about this event, then you can be entered in a raffle to win for a chance to win a prize or something. Um, that's just an example. Um, and so I do wanna preface that while incentivizing is really great, um, to not overdo it because sometimes, um, you know, you can get people who are only doing it for that incentive. So to kind of, you know, work with incentives, but to not solely rely on it. Incentivize for attainment, not recruitment. Um, and so now the day of the event. So now that we've gotten to know our campus, um, you know, we've identified what's going to make the biggest impact and we've worked backwards um, for planning and we've gotten the right people involved, we're actually set on the execution of the event and making sure it goes well. So I think that a great example for like, there are many different events that you can plan. The best that I like to use is a tabling event because it's just the most universal. Um, when we recruit, I think having at least two to three people per table is ideal. I know that some student orgs have just one person at a table or two people, but I think having like two to three is better because like you don't, you can't know how many people are gonna come up to your table at once. So if it's just one person there, like you're trying to still engage everyone but you're not just having like a general conversation with everyone. You wanna have specific conversations with specific people, right? Like making it personal, that's really what will increase retainment. And so I think to help with that, having QR codes ready to scan for general information purposes, whether that's membership, involvement, um, and especially for registration for upcoming and future events, having your business cards as well. And it could just be like the club org, an activity, the initiative, your name, and your contact information, which is, could be just like your email and your phone number, um, and then having an elevator pitch ready. So I like to always lead with specific questions for that person. Like I said, um, if it's a group of people, they're going to listen to like that main elevator pitch. But I think in addition to that elevator pitch that you're telling everyone, I think it's always great to have like, you know, it's just more meaningful to have a one on one conversation with each person that comes to your table. And if it's a group, then you can just ask them that one question and then, you know, have everybody answer separately because um, you're just more likely to get turned off that way um, because people feel more connected um, and that way they will feel more involved. So if that isn't the case that um, they're able to join or participate, um, there's always going to be multiple additional people who know who you are um, at, because of that tabling event. Um, and you may even get a friend out of it too, is what, you know, I like to say. So just overall, like, even if you don't um, get as many people to turn out from a tabling event, I believe that it's also just a great networking opportunity and an opportunity to just like learn about what other people are doing, whether that's in their specific club um, on the campus or just what's happening in their lives, the issues that, that um, are important to them. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up how to organize on college campuses. And I just added these additional resources um, uh, from Voter Friendly Campus, um, SLSV, which is the Students Learn, Students Vote Coalition, um, the studentsvoting.org. Um, MDC uh, has this like award incentive, like scoreboard challenge, which I think is really cool um, if you guys want to check that out. So I've put two links for that. Um, yeah, so just additional resources to help anyone. And then, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, take yourself off of mute. And I think, um, and I, I don't remember if I even introduced myself um, at the beginning. I don't think I did. But uh, Lindsay Wolker, she hers pronouns. I'm the one of the current co-chairs of the CLDE KC and uh, the director of leadership and civic engagement at the University of North Carolina Greensboro. And um, one of the, you know, one of the things that I think about with FSL is there is power in those organizations. 
Um, and so I think when we're looking to like 2022, for example, right, there are probably offices on every campus that have some tie to voting or someone who helps with registration or someone, whatever, whoever that is, it might be my, an office like mine or a volunteer office or campus activities or wherever that lives. Um, and so if you don't know yet exactly who that person is or who that office is, find out, right? But then also look at the voting rights on your campus. So the NSOLV report is really, really, really useful. Um, if you haven't used that data or looked at that data before, I'm sure that office has it. And so typically, right, there are certain um, uh, FSL communities that are potentially more involved civically than some others are. Um, what are those organizations on your campus? Who are the ones who have shown up before? Who's done voter registration drives? who's done a walk to the polls or our, um, one of our uh, other campuses in Greensboro, they did a stroll to the polls um, with their fraternities and sororities. Um, and so there's lots of opportunities here. And so what we were hoping for at this time would be for some of y'all to share, what are some ideas that you have around events that you're thinking about? Or like, what are the questions that you have about ways that you can navigate some of those CLDE spaces when we get to, for example, 2022, right? Um, what, what does that look like on your campus right now? And what are some things that you're planning for that you might have some, some questions about that you might just want to share with the group? Or if you have a really cool idea that you're super proud of and you can't wait to share it, um, like the donut fall in love with or donut forget to vote. We did a fall in love with voting um, around Valentine's Day. Um, but there's a whole bunch of little things that you can come up with, but anyone have any thoughts or ideas or questions about things that they're planning for their campus coming up to this fall? Everyone's like, I'm so prepared. I have an entire plan and I'm ready to go. I've got it all planned out. Do, do your FSL people do particular things around um, like voter engagement, voter registration, or are they less, less strategically involved? Um, question about incentives. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to uh, answer that. So yeah, we don't, um, which is why I had to kind of put that disclaimer about incentives. So we can't direct, it would be violating an election law if we're saying something like, if you vote, like if you fill out this voter registration form, then we'll give you a donut or something like that. But um, the way we get around that is like pledge to vote cards. If you sign saying that you will vote, then we'll give you a donut. So there's like, you know, a difference. But and just mm? oh, one of so we we actually I just had a conversation today with one of my colleagues about this because we're going to do student ambassadors in the fall um, to help with voting, voter registration, and what we're going to do is a competition of how many students the ambassador gets registered to vote. So they don't. So the student doesn't get an incentive for registering to vote. The ambassadors get an incentive for helping students register to vote. Right. So it's like you got to have a separation piece there. You can't incentivize a student to show up to the polls. Right. To cast their ballot. Um, but there are ways that you can kind of get around that. Um, another event that we did this past spring that was really successful, we brought in um, a local artist and they chalked um, around like a really busy space on campus. And they invited students to talk about like, what is, why, um, why voting matters? Like, why are you here and why do you care? Um, and so the local artist was able to talk about the work that they do with democratic engagement and voter turnout. And the students, we have some artistically inclined students, not my vibe, but I'm happy for them. Um, and so they were able to like draw pictures, right? Of like what voting looks like and why it's important to get out to the, to the polls. Um, and then not only are the students who are participating seeing it, but all the students who are walking by are seeing it, right? So like, do you have a rock on your campus that you can paint? Do you have a, a whatever space on campus that everybody goes to that you can have a chalk artist or some sort of something? Um, the, the fall in love with voting was like, we literally had like voting Valentines um, and handed those out to students with candy um, and just had like different deadlines for things that, um, that they could come and talk about like, well, how, how to fall in love with voting, um, why that's important to, to think about. So at UNCG, we have super high registration rates. Our students register at like 80 to 85%. 
um, but the turnout rate is not as high. And so that our efforts are gonna focus on turnout rather than registration, more so just changing your address. So that's the same for you in your FSL chapters. Are the students all registered? Cool, then maybe registration drives aren't your jam, but then you need to turn to, cool, let me focus on turnout then. Do we, are we walking to the polls together? Are we going to do some, like we're gonna go have dinner after? Are we like, what are we, how are we getting students excited about going to like actually showing up to, do you have an early voting site on campus? Do you even know that? How, <laughs> who are you talking to about if you can get one, if you don't have one? Um, so, you know, what, what are some of those questions that we're asking about um, how to how to get our chapters more more engaged? Because I will our our FSL community at UNCG is I would say not super engaged in our civic engagement and democratic engagement. Um, they have the power to do that. Uh, they have the voice to do that. They have the numbers to do that. Um, and so my hope is that they can get more um, more involved through uh, through some more work with our office. So really just that partnership piece too. But any other questions or thoughts or, or added things that people, cool ideas that people have going into 2022? I'm happy to share what we have done and do at University of Pennsylvania. We have a huge pen leads the vote um, initiative already. And we are also have a whole office that already does voter engagement. And so rather than recreating the wheel, we just make sure we have a relationship with that office and, you know, reposting the Instagram posts, putting their posts in our newsletter, telling our chapter houses where their voting locations are, if they live in our chapter houses. Um, and another one I saw that was big for this generation of students is like what the ballot actually looks like, what walking into a polling station, like literally photographs, because like it's nervous to walk into a party and not know anyone. It's nervous to walk into a voting location and not know what where you're supposed to walk to, what you're supposed to do step by step. So even and I know previous elections, our student newspaper like had like a step by step, literally where you walk through the door where you go to check in for anyone who lived on campus. And I think that helps with just like the nerves of students and what they're used to. Um, and then I think a big push for us, it's less about registration. We have a very, like Philadelphia in general, it's just a very voter engaged area. Um, it's more about our students going out in the community and getting our community members registered to vote and also showing up to like the different protests and or civic you know, like talking points in Center City during, like during near our city hall and being engaged in that process. Like we obviously just had local elections yesterday and there was a lot of politicians out talking um, and making sure our students are engaged outside of just campus and in the civic, um, not just voting, but also initiatives that are happening at, in legislation. Yeah, that's super cool. Thank you, Jessica, for sharing that. Um, and a couple other things, just resources for those of you who might not. So you, you know, there are organizations that want to help you pay students to do this work. Um, and so we have paid students through Campus Vote Project, through um, CEEP, uh, Campus Election Engagement Project, um, who are paid by those organizations, not by our office, to do this work. And so do you have a student who's engaged in FSL and one of your chapters who wants to do this work and you don't have the funding maybe to do that, there are organizations who want to help you do this work really well. Um, what about community federal work study? So we're talking about that right now of like, what does your federal work study num like uh, funding look like? How many students are engaged? Can this be part of that? If you, I put one link in here about the Dear Colleague letter that just came out um, about you know, higher education's responsibility to spread the word about voter registration and voter engagement. Um, what do you have at move in for, for voter registration, things like that. Um, also, one of the cool things that I saw our um, FSL community do in partnership with us was this um, event called Take Five Talks. Um, it happened at the, like one of the first weeks of, um, of school and it, we brought out like a living room furniture to the middle of campus and invited students to stop by and sit and take five minutes to talk to somebody they didn't know. And they got a take five candy bar afterwards, which I love take five. So like that was a huge incentive for me. Um, but that like if so the FSL community was doing that participating in that and the questions were like, 
Why, why does voting matter? Why is it important to talk to people about political issues? Do you talk to people about political issues? What are the barriers? How does this work? How do we navigate this space? Like, what are some issues that you're passionate about? Where does that come from? And so I think, think creatively, especially as to Jessica's point of like, if registration, again, isn't your issue, like if your students are registering a lot, how are you getting them excited about voting. Um, it's not often like the sexiest thing that people want to talk about. Maybe it is for some for some people, depending on the issue and what they're passionate about. But like, how are you thinking creatively about how to engage students in this process of voter engagement, voter education, voter outreach, voter turnout? Um, I think it's we have to get to Jessica's point, like thinking about the incoming generation of students. What different things can we do to help make them more comfortable with it? to help excite them about it. Um, yeah, what, what are some things that we can do? So um, feel free to steal any and all of those ideas um, and please let me steal uh, fun and creative ideas that you also have. Like I'm really thinking Jessica, I'm gonna order a voting booth and put that on campus and show students what it looks like. Um, Cause we have paper ballots in North Carolina because that's a thing. Um, and so they need to like be able to understand how to fill in the ballot hole, um, all that fun stuff. So any other, Thoughts, additions, questions, comments? Yeah, to piggyback off of that, I'm thinking if there could even be some sort of like virtual tour of like a voting space. Um, Cause I know like some people are not in person. So like having like a virtual aspect to that may be really cool. I don't know who would set something up like that but I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, I mean, and who has the relationship with your board of elections? Um, and are they, would they be open to that, right? So like that's, it's, I think the networking piece that you mentioned, Natasha, is really important of like, who knows who um, and how can you, you know, kind of tap into some of those resources? Cause I think that's a really cool idea. Um, I might steal that one as well. Thank you. <laughs> um, Lindsay, I, I appreciate what you said about the, um, the relationship with your local board of elections. Um, one of the things that we did at my previous institution, we had a really close relationship with the League of Women Voters um, and they would come and speak to organizational meetings, chapter meetings, all of those things and kind of talk about, you know, the importance of voting and, and that kind of stuff. Again, very nonpartisan, um, but, you know, if you want to use, you know, even like the League of Women Voters or any other voting organization within your community, um, that will also build that also built a longer term relationship with the league um, that we had um, for a number of other things. And then they came out and registered people on our campus to vote. So even the university was like, we're, you know, we could kind of in a way throw up our hands and say we're we're out a little bit, which is not really great um, messaging, but we also had this really great partnership and kind of put some of the onus on the league. Um, but they really had a great, um, a really good turnout on my previous campus. So having that relationship too. Cool. Thank you, Christopher. Anything else in our final moments together? Seeing none. Um, we, okay. Oh, thank you, Mike, for putting that in there. So we do have some upcoming webinars in our continuing partnership with us, FSL. Um, on the 16th of June, you'll see, or 15th of June, what? Um, I don't know how that went in my head. Um, the 15th of June, uh, intentional partnerships through service. So as we were talking, we know that our FSL partners do a ton of work um, with the community. And we're trying to talk a little bit more about how we can make some of those partnerships a little bit stronger. So how are we preparing students for service? What conversations and reflections are we having? Um, what types of partnerships are we creating and going after with our community? Um, so that's a, our next one. And then in July, we're talking about dialogue skills. So I mentioned that Take Five event where it's you know talking across difference. Uh, we know that's a civic skill that students need. Um, and we're hoping that in the chapters, right, they're having those types of conversations. They're talking about difficult topics, especially if you're doing any voter engagement stuff this fall. Um, how are your students prepared to have those conversations? And so we have a wonderful guest speaker that's going to join us for that. Um, they're both at three um, Eastern time. So we'll be sure to share that information. 
Um, we look forward to seeing some of you and some additional friends um, in, those, in those spaces moving forward. But let me just thank uh, Natasha so much and the Campus Vote Project for all the work that you do, but also that um, Campus Vote does for our, for our democracy. Um, thank you so much for that work. We appreciate it. And uh, thanks everybody for being here. And let us know if you have any questions, um, you can follow up. I'll put my email in here if anyone has questions about any of the things that, um, that I talked about while we were here, but it'll be recorded. We'll send that out to folks. You can feel free to share it and uh, have a good rest of your afternoon. Bye everybody.